Hello everyone, today we are talking about how to cut an inkwita. Now I set the canvas to 3000 by 3000. So there are two ways to import a picture to Krita. First is to go to file and click on open. Then it takes you to your picture folder and you select the picture. Right, then the second way is to go to layer and then click on import layer. This takes you to the same picture folder. But the difference between the two is that when you click on file and you click on open, the picture presents as a background. But when you click on import layer, the picture comes as a layer itself. Using the transform tool, you can now adjust the picture to your desired size. Now for the line art, I reduced the opacity of the reference layer and created a new layer above it. The brush I'm using is the basic one. And before I continue, I just want to state that this video was inspired by Genevieve's Design Studio. She did the same how to cartoon, but she did it on Procreate. One thing to note is the size of the brush when you're drawing the inner features, like the eye, the corner of the nose, the mouth, it should be thinner than the size you use to draw the outline. Okay, so once you're done with that, it's time to pick out the base color. Now, Genevieve did this thing where she put a blur filter on the whole picture and she did it to get the base color. So we are going to try that here. I added a filter layer and set it to Gaussian blur and I think it worked. It was at this stage I realized I was missing a docker, the advanced color selector and I just went to settings, went to dockers and replaced it. The next step is to draw the eyebrows. Now using the basic form brush, I outlined the shape of the eyebrows on a new layer. Let's not forget that. Filled it in. With the blender knife edge, I went over it with forward and backward motions. <laughs> For the eyes, I started with the pupils, just a black solid color, then the brown of the eyes, then two dots as highlights, then the whites of the eyes. I note I did all this on separate layers. You don't want to make that mistake where you need to clean something and then realize that you did everything on one layer. For the shadows on the eye, I went in with the airbrush. As this is a simple cartoon, we are not going for too much detail. So for the teeth, just color it in white and then use a solid, use a single color for the lips. I used a different brush though to apply the lip color. I used the basic two opacity. Now I filled in the color of the shirt on a separate layer. <laughs> So what I did was I just um, duplicated this reference layer and reduced the size. I added a filter mask and I set it to desaturate. I also got this from Genevieve's Design Studio. It um, apparently helps you to see where the shadows and where your highlights are. In her video, she set the layer on bone and I tried that here but it, I did not really like the effect so I just went with multiply instead and it gave me what i was looking for once you put your shadows i went with the light purple because that's what she recommended I also came down to the shirt. I did a few shadows on the shirt at the creases, nothing too detailed.
once I was done with the shadows, I started the hair on the new layer. I laid down the base color, then created a layer above it. With the airbrush soft, I picked the color black and I just I just started giving these random S shapes, these random curves. I was alternating between the lighter colors and the darker colors, trying to find the shadows, trying to find the lighter parts. At this point I was looking at the hair and I was not really feeling it and I did not know what was wrong. So I decided to just pause the hair and focus on the background first. I picked the colors from the background, the colors of the leaves, the pinks and black purples. So I picked them. I using the stamp leaves brush, I just went over the background. I didn't want to cover the whole background with the leaves as in the picture so I left a part bare. For the shadows, I went in with the darker green color and then reduced the opacity of the brush. Another brush I used was the Texture Big. Yeah, I created a layer under the leaves and then I just used it to fill in those empty spaces. <laughs> So at this point, I finally decided to go back to the hair. I went over it with black and got the shadows. Then I went over it with the lighter color for the highlights. I was just really intentional about the curls. I think my tip for drawing curly hair is just that, draw the curls. I just went over to the blender blood to smoothen things up. You could also use the blender basic for this if the blender blur is not your cup of tea. At this point, I just wanted to give it a webtoon effect so I set the color to white and using the texture big, I drew clouds. So I just wanted to complete the drawing although it was not shown in the reference picture. The next step is to change the color of your outline. Now to do this you need to set the layer on alpha lock first and that is done by clicking this checked box at the end of the layer. So once you click it a lock sign comes up so you know it's locked you can paint over the layer and it will just be on that layer on whatever you draw on that layer. Change the color to a bit of dark brown and for the shirt I change it to a darker shade of pink. Now for the highlights, so I created a new layer and I set it to color dodge then with a light yellow I just traced the highlights on the outline at the direction where the sun hits the face. <laughs> At this point, I realized I forgot the earrings, so that happened. For the shadows, I went in with a bit of orange after and I just laid it on top of the already violet color. I smoothened them with the blender blow. You could also use the blender basic for this though. Next, I put highlights on the hair and I went over them with the blender basic. Mm -hmm. 
now for the sticker effect just create a layer directly above the background layer i used the basic one increase the size a bit and just used a white color and went around it for the drop shadow she used a completely different approach but i just set the layer i created a new layer i set it to multiply and then i drew a line tracing the sticker line once that was done i reduced the opacity and it gave me the exact same effect now i noticed in her final cartoon picture she had this gradient effect on her background so i want to show you how to do it here there is this gradient tool you can see where i clicked it on the screen then set whatever color you want to use i'm picking a dark blue for this and just draw a line in the direction you want to place the gradient this might take multiple tries for you to get exactly what you're looking for also with the transform tool you can resize the gradient if you find out that it's too concentrated you can just shift it around and then using the blender blur or blender basic just blend it out a bit into the background but i wasn't really feeling the whole gradient so i left the picture like this <laughs> I recommend taking the also save as Krita file just in case you want to correct anything after you would have all the layers still available if you watched to this point please make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video mm -hmm.